Okay, so we're going to do a numerical example now using 1D bars all linked together. And we'll just draw the geometry of the system of bars that we're going to be considering. So, system of bars we've got is we're going to have bar number one. And I'll put the bar numbers in brackets and the node numbers I'll label differently in a minute. So, bar number one is going to be connected. And we're going to use a rigid link here. It's going to be connected to two other bars. Bar number two. And another bar that I'm going to call slightly thicker. Bar number three. And at the left hand end of bar one. I'll do that as a circle there. Show that it's a node. We're going to be totally fixed. At the right hand end of bars two and three, the two bars will be connected again with a rigid node. And finally, we're gonna have a fourth bar that connects all the way from node one, this fixity at the, right, at the left hand side and all the way to the ends of bars two and three. So we're gonna label the node numbers now. So we have this left hand end we're calling node number one. This middle bit we're gonna be calling node number two that connects bars one, two and three. And at the right hand end where bars two, three and four are connected together, we're gonna to call this node three. So we have three nodes in the problem. And at the right hand end, we're then going to apply delete that. At the right hand end, we're going to apply an external force F. So we're going to have a bit of geometry in there. So we're going to have the length between one and two and the length between two and three. And I'm going to choose that between 1 and 2, that length is 2 units. It could be metres if we're using SI units, but we're going to leave this generic as a computer code that you're going to write has no idea about units whatsoever. And the length between 2 and 3, nodes 2 and 3, is going to be 3 units. Okay. For every bar, the Young's modulus, E, is going to be equal to four units. So again, this could be newtons per millimetre squared, kilonewtons per metre squared, depending on the unit system you choose. And we're just going to use this as generic units for now. And finally, the bit of information we need, we need to know the area of each of these bars. So bar number one is going to have area equal to two units. Bar number two the area is going to be equal to 0 0.5. Bar number three, the area is going to be equal to 1.2. And for bar number four, the area is going to be equal to three units. And one last bit of problem definition. We're going to say that the force on the right hand side is going to be equal to 12 units. So would be kilonewtons or newtons in SI units. Okay, so this is the whole problem set up. And with the direct stiffness method, the first thing that we do is set up all the bar stiffness matrices. And I'm going to start off with knowing that each of the bars has the 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1. We're going to just start off by calculating the coefficients that they're going to be multiplied by. So the bar stiffness coefficients and so for bar 1 that stiffness coefficient I'm going to call K1 is equal to A1 multiplied by E1 in this case, E is the same everywhere through the problem, but it could change. And L1. So I'm just going to quickly calculate that. I have an area for bar number one 
is 2 multiplied by the Young's modulus 4 and the length of bar 1 is 2 units. So the coefficient is going to be 4. And we're going to carry on with the other bars now. So bar 2, K2 equals A2 multiplied by E2 divided by the length of bar 2. So that now equals 0 0.5 times Young's modulus, which was 4 units, divided by 3. So the stiffness coefficient is 2 thirds. Moving along to bar 3. So K3 equals A3 multiplied by E3 divided by the length of bar 3. So that now equals 1.2 multiplied by 4, the Young's modulus, and divided by the length, which is again 3 units long. So that's 4.8 divided by 3, which equals 1.6 units. So that's bar 3. Okay, move on to bar 4. So, bar 4, K4 equals A4 multiplied by E4 divided by the length of bar 4, which equals, so we have an area of 3 multiplied by the Young's modulus of 4 divided by the length of 5, so that equals 12 upon 5. Five, which equals 2.4 okay so we have all of the bar stiffnesses and remember the stiffness for one bar and we're going to just rewrite it down so the stiffness matrix for an element was equal to a e divided by l which we're calling the coefficients k1 2 3 and 4 multiplied by 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. <coughs> so what we need to do is assemble all of the stiffnesses for the four bars together into one large global stiffness matrix. So the global stiffness matrix and the operation that we're applying here and let's write it down assembly and we'll go back to the original problem we'll scroll back up we have three nodes nodes one nodes two and nodes three in the problem so we have three unknown displacements u1 u2 and u3 this means that our global stiffness will have dimensions of 3 by 3. So I'm going to draw that. And let's go for another colour. Let's go for grey lines. What I'd like to do, cut this up into the nine blocks that we need them to fill. And I find it also useful to have one, two, three denoting the node numbers for the rows and the columns. One, two, three. And I'm going to use a different color for each of the stiffnesses now. So I'm going to use, let's go with red for bar one. So going back to our picture, bar one is connecting nodes one and nodes two together. So we can put into our global stiffness matrix, we can have K1 minus K1 minus K1 and plus K1 going to blocks one and two. Okay, we'll do the same for element number two. So element number two was connecting nodes two and three together. Again, let's select another color. Let's go with blue. So K2s go in the rows and columns two and three. So we're going to have a plus K2 
minus K2, minus K2, and plus K2. So we can now just move on to bar number three. So bar number three is connecting nodes two and three together as well. So let's go, let's use the green pen for bar number three. So we can have K3 minus K3 minus K3 and plus K3. We're gonna add all these coefficients together in a minute. And we're left with just one bar left, which is bar number four. Now, bar number four is connecting nodes one and nodes three, but doesn't touch node number two whatsoever. So, and we'll use the gray color for this one. So in this case, we're gonna be using rows and columns one and three. So we have K4 minus K4 minus k4 and a plus k4 in 3 comma 3 so this is the assemblage of all of our stiffness coefficients we're going to put the numbers into that and we're going to take that a little bit further just in the next step and write down our full global system of equations you adding these coefficients in so the global system of equations now and all we're doing is adding so in block number one one we add k1 and k4 together so let's draw that and i'm just going to set out the spaces ready to go but i'm going to have an unknown u1, an unknown u2, an unknown u3. And that should be equal to the external forces. And so for the moment, I'm going to call them F1, F2, and F3. And just to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to... show how things link up and draw some space for the blocks inside the matrix okay so now we can add the stiffness coefficients together in block one one we had k1 and k4 and adding those two numbers together gives us 6.4 in block row one column two we had a minus k1 k1 was four so here we have minus four and we carry on the same idea so in block one three we had a minus k4 so that's a minus 2.4 and again in row number two column number one we have a minus k1 so that's a minus four in block two two Bars 1, 2, and 3 all come together. So we have stiffness coefficients K1, K2, and K3 all added together. And have those three numbers up. And you get 6.266. And again, we carry on filling out all the other blocks. We have minus 2.266. Minus 2.4. Minus 2.266, and finally in block 3 3 we have 4.66. Okay, so what we're going to do now is inspect our global system of equations, have a, have a look at what we already know, and it turns out that we know that u1 has to be equal to zero. We don't know any information about the displacements at node 2 and the displacement at node 3. We do know, however, that there is no external force applied at node 2. And we do know that at node 3, we're applying a force of 12 units. And finally, we can't see, let's go back to the diagram, 
We know that the system is fixed at node 1, so we know we're going to get a reaction force out there. So this is no longer an unknown force necessarily. This will be a reaction force that we're wishing to calculate later. Okay, so this full system of equations we know we cannot solve. So what we're going to have to do is reduce the system based on the fact that we know that u1 is equal to 0. So we're going to rewrite our reduced system of equations. And in this case, we know that u1 is 0, so we can knock out row 1, and we can knock out column 1. And that leaves us with a system of equations that we can solve which will be 6.266 minus 2.266 minus 2.266 and 4.66, which will be multiplying out by our, un at this moment, unknown displacements U2 and U3. And on the right-hand side of our equations, we have zero, because we know there's no external force, and the applied force at node three of 12 units. This system, this reduced system now, we can put into a linear equation solver, whether this is in your graphics calculator or using a package, either online or something like MATLAB. And so we can solve the system of equations. So if you throw this into your calculator or over a linear equation solver, or if you like, you could use Gauss elimination by hand, you should get then, and I'm just going to repeat this because we know it, U1 equals 0, U2 equals 1.1283, and U3 equals 3.1195. So at this point, we know all of the displacements in the system, and we could leave the problem at this point. But what we're going to try, what we're going to choose to do, is we're going to do some post-processing operations. So as an engineer, we'd be interested in the stresses or the strains or the internal forces so we can carry out some design. So post-processing post is the action of getting results that we're going to use in design situations. So, and I'm going to do this for one or two of the bars, not for every single bar, but for bar one, if we want to get the internal forces, what we use for this is the individual bar stiffness equations. So I'm going to rewrite. So we're going to say that our internal forces in bar one are equal to our bar stiffness so we had a stiffness coefficient of four so we had four minus four minus four four and if we multiply out by our now known displacements we had zero one point one two eight three for u two u two will give us our bar forces, let's use a superscript 1, the forces in F1, which were equal to, and you're going to get two forces, one at either end of the bar, and you get minus 4.513 and plus 4.513. So there are two forces there, and I think it's useful to do a little bit of a sanity check here. We're pulling the whole system into tension. Let's see what this minus 4.5 means and what the plus 4.5 means. Well, let's draw a free body diagram of the bar. 
and now we have a minus force at node number one so that's the minus 4.513 and we had a plus so the minus meaning that it's pointing in the left hand direction or the negative x direction and now we had a plus pointing to the right 4.513 so this makes sense that our bar is in tension so this is why we get equal and opposite signs for the internal forces in the bar and why we get two numbers let's carry out the same operation just to show how it works for bar four and again we write our stiffness matrix just for bar four so we had 2.4 minus 2.4 2.4 minus 2.4 and plus 2.4 and again we multiply by the two now known displacements for bar 4 so we had the first node for bar 4 was node 1 and we knew that the displacement was 0 the second node is node 3 and we know that the displacement now is 3.1195 and now we can multiply this out to give us the forces in bar 4. And that gives us minus 7.49, rounding up a little bit there, and plus 7.49. And again, the same idea as we had for bar 1. The minus sign denotes that the left-hand node is has a force internal force pointing to the left the right hand node has a force on it pointing to the right so therefore the bar is in tension okay so we're going to finish off this example now by trying to identify what the unknown reaction force we can kind of see that it's going to be 12 units uh, just on inspection of the original problem but we're going to show using the matrix methods how to calculate that reaction force so to get internal forces we use the individual bar stiffness equations to get external forces we're going to use the global system of equations so it's just scrolling up all the way up to where we wrote those down global system of equations here and we can identify that the top global the top row here multiplied by the vector of now known displacements will give us the value of r1 which is the reaction force that we're looking for so we're going to write that down But we're only going to use the rows and columns you could if you've already got it stored into your calculator or your computer you can use the full system of equations but it's actually more efficient if we just take the applicable rows and columns so the row that we're requiring from the global stiffness equations was the top row which was 6.4 minus 4 minus 2.4 and we're going to be multiplying this by the vector of now known displacements. And that vector was 0 for node 1, 1.1283 1 for node 2, and 3.1195 for node 3. And if we carry out the multiplication let's just write that there that should be equal to r1 we carry out the multiplication operation 6.4 times 0 minus 4 times u2 and minus 2.4 times the 3.1195 that yields that r1 equals minus 12 i.e that's going to be pointing to the left hand side and that makes the whole system of bars in equilibrium as we would expect 
further proce post-processing options you might be interested in doing just with 1D bars is to calculate the stresses or strains within the bars. And to do, do that, what we do is recall some of the elementary stuff from strength of materials. So for strains, we're going to use the change in length divided by the original length is the strain, and we tend to use the Greek letter epsilon for strains. And so for, say, for bar one, that would be displacement two minus displacement one, which gives the change in the length, and then divide by the original length, and the original length of bar one for this example was two units or we could write it in more generic terms and just give it the length of bar one. Then the other thing that you might want to do is calculate the stresses. And we actually have two options for calculating the stresses. So again, from strength of material, stress equals Young's modulus times strain, or you can use that stress equals force divided by area. 